<laughs> What's my bag? 2023. It's been a little while since we did this last. 2020 was the last time I did a What's in my camera bag video. So a lot of updated things for this year, a lot of streamlined uh, setups that I've got going on this year. Hopefully uh, you might be able to get some inspiration out of. The bag itself, we will start here, hasn't changed at all. And I don't think it will for quite a while until perhaps the next version comes out. But this is the Everyday Backpack by Peak Design. It is a 20 liter version, the smaller version in black, because black. Uh, and I love it. I love it because I am a very mobile shooter. I run and gun all the time and I hate putting my bag down. So, you know, when I'm out in the field, I'm literally, you know, carrying it, swinging it around, boom. <laughs> I love the speed, I love the flexibility, the portability, I love being on the go all the time. So yeah, this bag still hasn't changed for me and I don't think will anytime soon. When we're talking about contents, we'll just dive straight into the camera straight away. In the middle compartment, so I have it kind of set up in like a three, three kind of shelf scenario going on. And in the middle one, I always keep this setup. So this setup for me is my do all the things setup. This is the Sony A7R Mark V and the new 2470 G Master II lens. This setup has been everything for me. I've, I've shot so much on this recently and these two have just been absolutely inseparable for you know ever since the R5 came out and the 2470 GM2 came out, you know. The GM2, it's super sharp for everything. I've used it for portraits, landscape, street, architecture. You know, it's versatile, like a 2470 is, right? Well, like a 2470 always is. It's just amazing. It's it's everything I could ever want out of a lens. Um, it is a little bit big, it is a little bit heavy, but it is the price you pay for supreme image quality and amazing autofocus and all that good stuff. Uh, the R5 is so close to my favorite hybrid camera of all time. You know, I do a lot of photo and a video nowadays and on the photo side, the R5 series or the R series in general hasn't ever been a slouch, you know, with 61 megapixels, the image is just so, so good. Uh, but recently in this iteration, you know, this thing now shoots 4K 60, which is amazing. Um, it has S and Q built in and all that kind of stuff. It's got, you know, eight, stops of image stabilization and a really good active stabilization mode as well. So it's just amazing. It's, it's, it's just such a great package that, you know, I reach for this setup first. Well, I found myself reaching for this setup first for almost every single job. You know, I've done Antarctica this year. I've done Europe and, and a bunch of different Japan trips and stuff like that. And, and this has just served me so, so well. So that's the main kit. Now I always keep two cameras in my bag. The secondary kind of setup here at the moment, or at least recently anyway, has been the Sony ZV-E1 as the body with a little uh, toupee mic hat thing on it as well. And the 1635 power zoom. So this has been interesting because it's so small and so light and just, you know, I carry it around everywhere and it like pretty much weighs nothing. Um, but the 1635 is such a sleeper, or the G version, is such a sleeper lens because it's just so sharp. It's tremendously sharp. It isn't F4, so it isn't like the G Master F2.8. So it's, you know, for low light, it's not as good, but don't sleep on this lens because it's amazing. It's so sharp, it is so light. It has a really cool power zoom feature as well, which is uh, really nice on the ZV-E1. So it means I can control the zoom with the rocker here. Uh, and the ZV-E1 has been just an amazing all around video camera for me with stills as a crutch every now and then, you know, 12 megapixels. It has the same sensor as the A7S III. So low light performance is absolutely top notch. It also does 4K 120, which my A7R Mark V misses. Uh, and it's just light and it's just nice. You know, it has a nice flip out screen. It's just a really good like vlog video kind of setup when I'm running and gunning or I need a second camera, which is like all of the time. So I always keep this with me and it does do photos in a pinch, which is great as well. Uh, but I don't find myself using this for, for photography that often at all. 
Sometimes if I'm on a job where you know I need a lot of images and I'm perhaps not shooting you know uh, two face kind of video like vlogs or, or what have you, I will switch out for the A1 which does everything, <laughs> you know, it does photos well, it does super slow-mo video well, it does all the things really, really well. But I find, I find myself like not reaching for this camera as much recently because it's just kind of outdated now. Um, the autofocus is still top-notch, don't get me wrong, but with the other bodies, you know, the AI autofocus that's come out in the Sony cameras recently is just so insanely good that this for me in most cases is kind of irrelevant, which kind of sucks. I've kind of alluded to this in other videos in the past, but you know, Sony doesn't update their flagship camera, the A1, and that kind of sucks because they release so much technology so quickly and don't do a lot of backwards compatibility stuff with their, their other models. And I think that's a really big shame, especially for the flagship model camera. So if it continues like this again, I probably won't buy the next version of the A1 because it's probably gonna be superseded by the next version of you know whatever Sony camera comes out after that, which kind of sucks. But yeah, with the A1, I do love the sensor, I do love the image quality, the noise performance, the low light capability, all the things, the sensor inside this and the, the processing power inside this is just second to none, absolutely stunning. But, you know, it doesn't have a flip out screen, the in-body image stabilization isn't, you know, eight stops like it is in the R5. The autofocus is great, but it's not the AI autofocus. It doesn't have dynamic active stabilization like the ZV-E1. It's just got a whole bunch of features that are missing. And that's why I reach for those two other cameras first before this one. But yeah, for, for low light images, this, this is untouchable. But yeah, that's pretty much all I will use this for. Now, occasionally in the top pocket of this bag, I will switch out for these kind of three lenses, depending on what I am doing or what kind of project it is I'm working on or where I'm going or what have you. Um, this is the 35 millimeter G Master F 1.4, uh, very, very small. Um, and I will use this or the 85 millimeter F 1.4 G Master as well for if I'm doing portraits. Um, sometimes I will also reach for the 8514 if I'm doing street photography specifically as well because I love the look that this lens gives me for street photography. And then if I'm doing more of a, a landscape thing or you know the scenario is a little bit more unknown and I don't really know where I'm going, which is not that often, but I will bring the 7200 G Master version two, super light, super sharp. This is miles ahead of the previous version in my in my opinion, but honestly, I haven't actually used it all that much. Um, you know, I've only taken it out to like a dozen different shoots with me and I haven't really put it through its paces to justify bringing it around because it is quite big, quite heavy and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, these are the three kind of lenses that I'll interchange depending on the scenario and the, the types of things that I'm shooting. Now, of course, long time viewers of the channel will know that I am a big advocate of this little guy. This is the uh, Sony RX100 Mark 7. Unfortunately, it is still the Mark 7 and they haven't released a newer version of this wonderful, wonderful pocket camera just yet. Um, but, you know, I still carry this one around with me because it is just the best compact camera you can get, I think. And it, you know, it is a 24 to 200 millimeter lens, 20 megapixel camera. It is f you know, fantastic when it comes to image quality. It does video, all the things. It has the same one inch sensor in a lot of, you know, DJI's Mavic drones, for example. So if you use those drones or have used those drones in the past, you know what image quality you're gonna get and you know how good it is. Um, this thing, you know, it is the size of my palm. <laughs> and this just sits in my, you know, little drink pocket here on the side and I keep it with me at all times. But something that has been traveling with me a lot more recently is the Sony RX1R Mark II. Now this is such a, a, a luxury, unnecessary, camera, but it is one of my favorite everyday cameras ever. 
This is actually my second version of this camera, or well, the second iteration of this camera. The first one I had years and years and years and years ago, uh, but only recently within the last year or so, I rebought this camera just as an everyday uh, kind of carry camera. So, you know, the, the menus are in Japanese and I bought it here and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's just like, has this whole like retro charm that I, that I really enjoy about it. Uh, but if you don't know anything about this camera, so the RX1R is a, a compact camera, uh, much like the RX100. Uh, it has a little pop-up viewfinder. The entire body is made of metal. It is a full frame 42 megapixel sensor in here with a 35 millimeter F2 lens fixed. Uh, you know, it was made in 2015, so the autofocus sucks, and it, <laughs> you know, it only goes up to like one over two thousandth of a of a second for shutter speed, and it has a whole bunch of like little annoying quirks that, especially if you're coming from you know today's world of Sony, you know, so many features are missing in this camera, but there's something about it that is just such a, it just makes it such a nice everyday camera that I've been really enjoying taking this around the last eight months or so. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I love it. Some of the images that I've had uh, with this camera in, in the last year have just been so uh, dear to me and so amazing and, you know, just off the cuff images that I would have taken with my RX100. But yeah, sleeper camera, super expensive, super unnecessary, but really nice to have nonetheless. Sometimes if I need a tripod, I will bring this guy with me. This is the Peak Design Travel Tripod in carbon fiber. It is the same one as I've been using for many, many years now. The same one that I've uh, shown off in the, the last uh, what's in my bag as well. I love it because it's so small, like, you know, it, it's, it's palmable. It's the same width as a drink bottle. Here is a drink bottle, you know, they're very, they're very comparable. Um, and this just kind of sits on this side of the backpack when I'm not carrying it. It is a little bit short for me and my height, it only goes up to like, I am 182 centimeters, so just about six foot. Um, and it, it just comes to, to my chin kind of level. So this is okay. Uh, I do wish it was a little bit taller, but for the size, the weight, it is amazing. It is very expensive as a tripod. So unless you are cashed up, I really don't recommend it. I recommend the aluminum version, uh, which is the cheaper version of this, not carbon fiber. They're both great tripods. Uh, but if you do have the money to splash on a quality tripod that you can use for years and years and years, like I have with this one, then the carbon fiber version is definitely the one that I would go for. Some of the small things that I have in my bag at the moment on the side, little pockets, stretchy pockets here, we've got like a bunch of uh, Z-type batteries. And in the top pocket, we have uh, SD card holder. So this is the Pelican SD card case. And I've got the, I've got a little CFast Express one up here, but you know, that's kind of what it looks like. Got a little rocket blower here. And then in the side, I'm still using the Peak Design Leash. So I use the leash for, for, for everything. I love this because it can go as a, a crossbody kind of thing, or I can have it and change the, the length and have it slung from the neck. Um, so versatile, and I have this, I have two of these actually for both of my bodies, um, just in case I ever need it. And then on the outside, I also keep the, the cuff as well. So this is the Peak Design cuff. You'll notice everything is Peak Design. I adore Peak Design. I love their stuff. I have almost every single one of their products. Um, they have sponsored me in the past and I, I just, I don't know, I just love all of their stuff. All their stuff is just so thoughtfully well designed and it looks great and I love using it. So I will continue using it. In the top bit here, I just have some other cleaning accessories and stuff. So we've got some, uh, lens cleaner, we've got a little lens pen thing, which has like a like a little cleaner. I don't even know what you call these things. Like it's for your, your eyepiece, it like cleans the eyepiece. And then the other end is like a, a brush you can use to brush stuff with. Really nice. Um, pen, USB stick. Uh, I've got my Kindle in here. So this is the uh, Kindle Oasis. 
Uh, I've had this for, for many, many years and it's uh, a little bit dirty and a little bit beat, but you know, it uh, definitely gets the job done. And I've got my AirPods here, custom engraved with my name. Um, I've got a fan because here in Japan during the summertime, it is so, so hot. It is ridiculous. And this one's awesome because it like kind of comes off and it doubles as a, uh, a battery bank, which is kind of neat. And then we've got the filters that I'm using at the moment. So for video, especially for this setup, specifically the ZV-E1 and the 1635 GPZ, um, I use the Nissi True Color, I think it's called, um, variable ND filters for video and for vlogging and for B-roll and, and all that kind of good stuff when, when I'm out filming video. And then something that has been uh, a recent addition to my kit is actually the Insta360 GO 3. So this is a tiny little action camera that has like a little dock and it's this size. <laughs> so in conjunction with this, I use this like pendant thing. This little pendant here goes underneath my shirt and it kind of just, you know, clips in like that and I suddenly have like POV view, which is kind of cool. Um, so look out for some new POV videos shot with this thing coming very soon. All right, and that's pretty much it. So I carry two full frame bodies uh, with two lenses most of the time. I'll carry a compact camera, whether that's an RX1R or the RX100. I'll switch out these three lenses depending on whether I need them or what the job calls for, uh, as well as the A1. Got a whole bunch of cleaning stuff, got the action stuff, got storage, and all of that fits in the Peak Design Everyday Backpack in a 20 liter in the black. And that's kind of it. That gets me 90%, 95% of my everyday carry, and honestly, 95% of my jobs even as well. Let me know, what camera bags are you guys using? Because I haven't looked at all in the last, like, at least four or five years in terms of camera bags that are out there. And I'm sure a whole bunch of new ones and really cool ones have come out. So let me know what you guys are using and what gear you haul around with you on the everyday as well. I would be super interested to know. Okay, I'll see you in the next video, but until then, get out there and make something that matters. Peace.